Hi there, welcome in everyone. My name is Taylor. I'm also known as the Mustard Queen. Welcome to Food Talk TV. We go live every single day with live food content and Thursdays at 7 central is my time so welcome back. Today we are doing another grill day. Oh yeah. When it's nice out like this my husband and I will take any excuse to use the grill but tonight we are doing something I haven't done before. We are grilling a whole fish. Now this fish was something that was sold to us through a farmer's market, so they cleaned it and they cut off the head and stuff for us, so we won't have to be looking at it. But it's the first time I've done a whole fish just on its own. It's a rainbow trout, so I'll be doing that on the grill along with a charred romaine salad. Also gonna be doing some potatoes and a beer monte sauce. So let's get started. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is start with the potatoes, because that's gonna be what takes the longest. Alrighty, welcome in, welcome in everyone. Please tap the screens, it makes me feel good. Tap, 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 please do that. I'm using a mandolin for these so I get, a, for my potatoes, I'm essentially doing potato chips, but they're not really chips, just like slices of potatoes on the grill, just for an easy potato side dish. And I'm using a mandolin so that way all of mine are gonna be about a quarter inch of thickness. And when I'm using the mandolin, I will always, always, always use a glove. I've seen and heard too many horror stories. All right. And plus it's just easier to not have to worry about your fingers getting cut off. Y'all welcome in, welcome in. Yes, grilling is awesome. Hello there, Sasha. How are you doing? Y'all please tap the screens. Unless you're working with potatoes like I am. Oh, hey husband. Now this is actually a step that you can do ahead of time. Whenever you're making potatoes, you can always slice these ahead of time and you can store them in your fridge just in a container of water and you can store them like that for a few days. Just make sure because we're grilling these, they need to be patted dry. Oh, so that's filling up. But I do typically, if I'm working with a lot of potatoes, I will throw them in water just because they will brown, you know, like apples do, they will brown. But with these, I don't want to add water unless I have to. So I'm going to be adding some oil just immediately to these just so they don't oxidize and look ugly. Which, I mean, if they do turn brown, it's fine. It's just not pretty. Ooh, fancy. Fancy pants Rich McGee over here. <laughs> My husband doesn't do that very much, but um, he loves that meme right now. You cut the tip of your thumb off last year using it? How did you do Oh no! See, th that is a good story right there of why you need to be using a glove, a cut glove, or they also have, you can use a fork stuck in there to use that. They also often come with handles, so you can just like prick it and like hold on to the handle, but I've never used a mandolin that came with like a good handle. Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it, y'all. Yes, please be sure you're following us because we do live cooking content every single day. My day is on Thursdays at 7 Central. I've been doing this for over a year now. But we have so many great creators and all of our styles are just a little different. So are our personalities. Are we just uh, heating up the grill now? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, just drop the cold beans. Started in the... Um I don't know. Um, oh, wow. The chimney starter? Yeah, chimney starter. Yeah, the chimney yeah. Starter. Started them in the chimney starter. Sorry, I just got distracted by this. Your, your My apparatus what? of destruction. My apparatus of destruction. My husband is also in camp. Um, don't get me near that mandolin because that thing causes damage. Yeah. Yeah, so. But I wore, I wore a glove. I know, I saw that. Yeah, that, that. and I was telling my audience, hey, you should wear a glove, and then I have people telling me their horror stories in the comments, so it's very encouraging to wear the glove, the protective yeah. glove. No glove, no love. Took a while, oh yeah. The thing is with mandolin injuries, when you get yourself, it's good, it's good. And it's so easy to just get comfortable in what you're doing and thinking you know what you're doing. It's easy to not pay attention for just a moment. We are going to season heavily with salt. 
So all these, not all these recipes, I do have the recipe for the trout and for the romaine salad I'll be doing, the charred romaine salad. That's already on Food Talk TV. On the website. And I was torn if I, how I was gonna mustard these or if I was gonna mustard them, because if y'all don't know me, hi, I am also known as the Mustard Queen. Seriously, just search for Mustard Queen on this app, you'll find me. But I think I do wanna add some mustard to it. And you know, they don't pay me to say this, but the Cuban style mustard from Plotman's is just by far my favorite. It's just so good. It is um, a yellow mustard blend, but then they put like chili. I know that there's some peppers in here, but there's also a bunch of herbs. There's also wine and citrus, my absolute favorite. And I just threw like a tablespoon in there along with salt, pepper, and I'm gonna throw in some granulated garlic, just a little bit. Cause I do want the garlic flavor, even though there's some in the potatoes already. And I'm just gonna use my hands. <laughs> Forge, do you experience this today? Oh my goodness, y'all. These comments are definitely reminding me, encouraging me to always wear a cut glove when I'm using a mandolin. Oh yeah. So these are gonna be on the grill. So we're not really even gonna get a whole ton of the mustard flavor from here because at a certain heat, the flavor of mustard is very volatile, meaning that it evaporates super easily. Even so much so that if you've ever had a mustard that's just really hot, like hot mustard, not like hot pepper, but hot mustard, you know what I mean? Like the Chinese hot kind of um, horseradishy taste or whatever. If you're ever experiencing that and there's too much heat, it evaporates so quickly that all you have to do is breathe out of your mouth because the heat will evaporate so quickly up to your nasal area. So if you are experiencing that intense heat from the mustard, just breathe out of your mouth. That is how quickly the flavor of mustard evaporates. So while I'm, the mustard is just making a great vehicle for me to like spread my dressings all over or spread the seasoning all over. But then also because I'm using a flavored mustard, we'll get some of those flavors in there, like the wine and the garlic and the citrus that they have in here. So if it's similar to brain freezes with mustard, is it like brain burn? I wouldn't say it's like brain freeze with mustard. It's like brain, or brain, brain burn. burn. Brain burn. Yeah. Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to, my, it's like a horseradish burn. I'm gonna play my brain burn on the mustard. All right, so that's what we are doing, and then my husband's just gonna like ch -ch 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 on the grill later. Um, I'm looking for the um, grape seed oil. Oh, I have it. Oh. <laughs> nice. Grape seed. Done. Which we like using grape seed or avocado, whatever we're grilling, because it does have a much yeah. higher smoke point, and they are both neutrals as well. Grape seed. Grape seed. Awesome. Grape seed and again. <laughs> so those will be set over this side. Well, I like the pantry door being open. So I guess while we're waiting for the grill to warm up so we can start the potatoes, we'll go ahead and prep our trout. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Wash my hands. I really am curious how many times a show I'm like, wash my hands, wash my hands. I thought about going through some of my lives and just clipping all the times I've run to wash my hands and be like, yeah, it's that much. Okay, so this is the trout that I got. Got it from a farmer's market. So this is how it was sold to me. It was sold to me with it already cut and cleaned in here. I spent a long time researching how to do this because I've never done whole fish before. I've done fish fillets, but I've never done a whole fish before. I've never uh, grilled potato fillets. Potato fillets. I've done whole potatoes. <laughs> but but not I've never potato fillets. Potato fillets. <laughs> so. Yes, and this is the rainbow trout. Now, there are two main types of trout that you can get there's the steelhead trout and there's the rainbow trout this is a rainbow trout and you can tell that it's a rainbow trout because you see that like 
very distinctive line down there. So this is a rainbow trout. There is a steelhead trout as well that looks very similar to this, but steelhead trouts will get bigger more often than not. So when it comes to like trout fishing and stuff like that, um, the rainbow trout is like what's impressive in fishing competitions because if those things are big, you know, the steelhead trout, it's like, eh, who cares? It's just another steelhead. The reason why steelheads get so much bigger than rainbow trout though is because rainbow trout spends its entire life in freshwater. Its entire life is in freshwater, but steelhead trout is born in freshwater but then when they get to a certain age, then they are just drawn to go out to the sea. So then they go to salt water. But then when they are ready to reproduce, they just know to come back to fresh water. And so that's where they spawn. So they do a little bit of both. But they're essentially the same fish. They're just two different subspecies. So in case that, but we have the rainbow trout. Hello, hello. Oh, I have my paper towels here. Because I did keep this at room temperature. It's been out for about 30 minutes now. Our, our uh, in, in Tennessee here, our most abundant wild trout is uh, rainbow trout. Oh, it's the most abundant in it's Tennessee. That makes sense because that's where we are. We have, of course, we have rainbow trout. We have rainbow trout. We have brown trout. And we are the, the only native trout in Tennessee is, uh, they're, they're called brookies. Or brookies? Trout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that like a brownie and a cookie? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's the, uh, it's the Southern Appalachian brook trout. And they are only like up in the mountains in the coldest water. Oh. Like the coldest, coldest. Like if you go to like Gatlinburg and stuff. Oh, like, in, like mountain like, trout. Yeah, like mountain trout. Yeah, you got to go up in there and um, it, you usually have to hike to the, 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 the trout and hole. Um, it's also in Virginia. All right. Grew up catching rainbow trout. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, there's so many times, or um, I've never been much of a fisher, or never been like a hey, let's, you know, catch some fish to cook immediately. But this is making me want to try that now. I always because um, it really is such a thing. I always pay extra for the trout endorsement on my fishing license, but I never go trout fishing. <laughs> really? Yeah. How long do fishing licenses expire? It's usually a year. Oh, okay. And yes, you do need a fishing license, especially here in Tennessee, because they will get you. They'll get you. Uh, they're, oh, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, you they'll get die. you. They will go to your house. They will drag you to jail. Um, Not saying because this happened to a friend of us. Uh, well, he was in contempt because he didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. He he didn't know he had a court date for it, so um, so he didn't go. So he was really arrested for the contempt of it. But they it's came, just so funny that it's like fishing threw him in jail. Straight up came. Wash my hands. Work. <laughs> and arrested him at work. Right. Whew. And now as far as the scales are concerned, um, I don't care about those. When it comes to trout, like nobody's scales. Um, you can for presentation purposes, but the scales on these guys are just so small it doesn't matter. So, I'm going to set this to the side. Because we got to prepare, because I'm going to stuff the insides with these. So when you're cutting this yourself, you essentially just like put a slit in here and just pull out like the stuff you don't want to eat, you know, y you'll know it. And then, um, but we're going to use that same slit to stuff it with some herbs and lemon and onion. Oh, I need to grab an onion. Grab an onion. Grab an onion. Grab an onion. So what are you going to... Oh, I'm, I'm doing. <laughs> what am I cramming in the slit? <laughs> that is not something I should say on TikTok. But I will be doing slices of onion and also some slices of lemon in the trout, and then some just like an herb bouquet. And as I said before, this is my first time cooking this type of thing, cooking whole fish on here. This is kind of pretty standard with how it is because whenever I'm cooking something new, I will look at like 10 recipes and then just kind of go from there, kind of pull the things that I really like from that. But pretty much the recipes were very much so the same here when it comes to just grilled trout. In that you put lemons in there, some people did garlic, some people did onion, some people did shallot, you know, that was kind of varying there. So I'm going to try it this way, but maybe next time I do the trout, next time I do the trout, maybe 
I'll be able to figure out a way to mustard it. So, because that's the first question people tend to ask me if I'm not adding mustard to it. I just want to try it as is. I have not been paying attention in the comments. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. Glen Rainbow. Trout stamps are a little more cost. Oh, are we talking about like for the fishing license? Yeah. That's so weird. I wonder why that's a thing. Because why is trout more expensive? Because they they can. They well they stock the rivers with trout like every so often every like TWRA or your local WRA um, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. they, they they stock the they stock the rivers to keep a steady supply. Of them. Okay. Um, so I imagine it costs money to do that and that's that's probably how they recoup it oh interesting i'm a, that's my theory I don't yeah know that's a sure. that's a good theory because and that makes sense because okay the neighborhood that we're in we are walking distance to the river um michelle's not in here but she visited me in nashville but she was also off doing other stuff in the park she ended up at is walking distance to my house so she'll tell you the river is just right there but um Anyway, like there's always signs in our neighborhood or like HOA or um, in our Facebook group, really, where they tell us, um, hey, you can't be, you know, fishing in this area. This is not a licensed fishing area. And when you do that, you're bringing flies and other bugs and pests to our area because, you know, we're not getting the things to eat the things. And you'd probably not want to go trout fishing like we're, we're, we're downstream from the, the uh, dam. And when they let that thing loose, like, the water rises very quickly. Right. And unpredictably, or predictably, but very, like, not good. I think a few people have, have drowned because of that. Oh, I'm sure. You know. So I'm getting a lemon and I'm cut it in half. Did I debone the fish? Okay, the thing is, I'm going to wait to debone the fish afterward. So there's still a bone in here, but I'm going to wait for it to cook before I pull it out. I have seen a couple of people pull them out of them before they're cooked, but I watched a few YouTube videos, so I'm an expert now. Um, but it just looked way easier after it was cooked. This so is a huge gamble, I did not. Yeah, this is a gamble. I, as I said. If you don't, then you're picking a lot of little, 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 right, little, right. little, little bitty... But I mean, I guess that's a pretty solid reminder that, hey, fish have bones. So even if you get yours from a restaurant or from a specific supplier that already deboned it for you, like, they could still be in there. You got to pay attention. Yep. Be careful. Keep a, keep a toothbrush handy. All right. If a fish bone gets lodged in your throat, they say, jam the toothbrush down there because it'll... Jam a toothbrush Yeah, down yeah, there. the bristles. The bone will get caught in the bristles and you can pull it out. Huh. That's what they say. I have literally never heard that. That's fascinating. I, I don't even know who they are. That's oh, Chandler just showed up for that. Chandy, <laughs> Chandy what's Chandy up? Chandy is the queen of toothbrushes. Oh, what kind of fish is it? It is rainbow <laughs> trout. We are doing whole rainbow if, trout. If you don't have a toothbrush to use with your rainbow trout, Chandler will send you like 50 of them. <laughs> Chandler was over at my house and she accidentally uh, destroyed my husband's toothbrush. And so... She sent us like 50 of them, so. <laughs> so I'm gonna pat dry one more time because it is important. I did pat it dry earlier, but it is important, important, important. Yeah, the scales on here are just so tiny. It doesn't even, no y'all, I spent a long time like watching ways to um, scale a fish and watching how to do that. I spent so much time doing that before I spent the time researching if I should. <laughs> so, <laughs> goes to show whenever you're learning a new recipe before you're trying to learn how to do something, figure out if you should first. <laughs> Toilet brush also works. Oh, okay. Toilet brush. All right. <laughs> I don't know, man. If I'm choking it, it's like a used toilet brush is like the thing that saves my life. I might not make it. <laughs> Just get the plunger, <laughs> All right. Feel like I have done that to the best of my abilities. So what am I supposed to do with these potatoes? Just like oh yeah, just like. 
Put them one by one on the grill. Yeah, it's going to be a big pain in the butt. Enjoy. It looks to be that. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what it'll be. Oh. <laughs> hey, he wanted to be the one on the grill. He could have been in here prepping. That's a lie. He could not. <laughs> I mean, he could, but we're just seasoning liberally with salt. Or salt to taste. Y'all, I have my recipes posted on Food Talk. I have plenty of recipes posted. And the one thing I do not put in my recipes is how much salt to use and how much pepper to use. I do not do that because, you know, your salt preferences are different than mine. My husband and I love a ton of salt on and pepper on our stuff. But we have friends that think we over salt. So whenever we're doing stuff with them, we use less. So why would I put that in my recipe if I have to adjust it based on who's there? Oh. You know what? Last minute decision. I am going to put... I know I said I wasn't going to mustard this because I wanted to, you know, do it correct the first way or the first time around or like the way everyone else does, but I can brush a little mustard in here. I'm doing this because I basically add mustard to a lot of my foods. I, I am the mustard queen after all. Just look in this app and you'll see. Just a little bit, just enough to like coat the top. Okay, so Birdie Better is saying, I'm sorry, they're saying that this is so this is rainbow trout. So this one specifically is not salt water. This one specifically is fresh water. Now, as I was saying earlier, the steelhead trout, like this is rainbow trout. There is the steelhead trout that will live its life in salt water, but then it comes to the fresh water to give birth and then will leave and come back. So they're born and they give birth in there. Keep washing my hands because fish, but like I'm going right back into the fish. Alright. Just putting some. Oop. That was not a good cut of mine. Oh, thank y'all so much for the follow. Please be sure you're giving us a follow for live cooking content every single day. My name's Taylor Rose, also known as the Mustard Queen. You'll see me here on Thursdays at 7 Central. You can follow me on my main account, which is Ketchup is Garbage. And yes, that's for sure, because I am the Mustard Queen. But I started with uh, Ketchup is Garbage. And so the green onions, I'm gonna, I didn't even put green onions in my recipe, but I have like these that are like kind of wilted at the top, but like it's great. So I'm just gonna shove them in there, cause I can, cause I can. Now this stuffing that I'm putting in here, okay, maybe not all of them. Yeah, that doesn't. We'll do one each. The stuffing that I'm putting in here, it's not necessarily meant to eat. It's just going to flavor the fish. Oh, I love mustard. So this was um, at the farmer's market that I got this. I don't remember the name of the people, but... Typically farmer's market, anywhere that sells rainbow trout, because rainbow trout, when it's rainbow trout, it means it's fresh. Water fish. But I am in Tennessee. Y'all let me know in the comments where you're from, because I'm sure that there is some sort of trout there for you. Alright. And then I also have these thyme sprigs that I just pulled out of my garden. If you have a garden of herbs, this is a great recipe, because it's like, just shove whatever herbs you have from your garden in here. Speaking of, I have to wash my hands again to not get fish hands over the chives. Yeah, I'll put a couple in each. And some parsley as well, which I'm In there. Yeah, get in there, stick it in there. Uh, 
This is Rainbow Trout. <laughs> of course, this doesn't have to be Rainbow Trout, but... I'm trying not to overstuff it, but... Okay, I'm going to remove this onion, because I would rather have a little of all my ingredients. There we go. And then these are some whole chives straight from the garden. Oh, yeah. And I'm not even gonna like prick this or anything to keep it in there. I'm just gonna trust the filling stays inside. Oh man, oh, the fish is limited due to chemicals in buffalo, man. Yeah, this, um, I remember when I got this fish, this was actually in my freezer for a bit because they sold it to me frozen and vacuum sealed and I just thought it for today. But when they sold it to me, I remembered them making a big fuss about, um, not using any chemicals with their fish and how big of a deal and how difficult it was. So it was a little pricey for this guy, but sometimes you just pay for quality. Okay. Oh yeah, I definitely overstuffed. It's kind of like a weird taco, a taco carcass. Oh yeah. So yeah, just whatever herbs you got. Alrighty. Oh yeah, pay for quality for sure. Now, a thing that is really good, I don't know if y'all have ever had this, and this is something I contemplated on making today too, is with the trout, making a smoked trout dip. Y'all, the first time I was ever, I had smoked trout dip, it was at a restaurant and I'm just like, trout dip, what is that? But it's basically just like a creamy dip with like paprika and sometimes pe people will throw in um, peppers and stuff. But the smoked trout really just steals the show in that dip. So that was another thing I was kind of thinking maybe make with the smoked trout, but oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then the other thing I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of reset a bit because actually, you know what? We should check on my husband because he's out the grill and uh, Oh man, it looks like he's struggling. Cause I gave him a fun task. How was it uh, just it flipping? It like a freaking uh, like cutthroat kitchen. Um, oh, like a, a- Sabotage. Tell me how you really feel about this recipe, right? Mama Bear, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Y'all be sure you're following Food Talk TV. We do live cooking content every single day. And I'm here at Thursday, 7 Central with my show, Cutting the Mustard. Yeah, that's a burnt guy, but it's okay. Crispy. Crispy guy. Crispy. And then he still has all these potatoes to go. Oh, crispy. Yeah, I still have all of those potatoes to go. I wonder if you just throw them on the grill, what happens? Uh, they fall through. Oh, they fall through? Okay, yeah, so not a good idea. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> Thank you, husband. Okay, going back in. Okay, so I'm seeing in the comments y'all are talking about like your water and stuff like that. And hold on, I'm gonna put this back over here. Talking about the water quality and stuff. And I don't know, this just kind of reminded me of a really fun random fact about mustard in that um, one thing that mustard is really good at, like the mustard plant itself, it's really good at detecting uranium. And so it will often grow naturally in places with uranium deposits in the ground. So, uh, and then it will also, like some people will use mustard plants to grow in places with like metal contamination and stuff because the mustard roots will actually like absorb that. They use mustard plant as a way. I don't think they sell the mustard seeds after that either, but Anyway, the city in the world that grows the most mustard out of anywhere is uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg, Canada. Also, guess uh, where the highest uranium deposits are? I know so much stupid crap about mustard. 
Have I ever had Weber's mustard? You know, I don't think I have, but I did see that they sent me a message on Instagram a while back that I haven't gotten back to, but I haven't tried it. I need to try more of the mustards. A lot of my content has been about like making mustard from scratch just because I think that's a fun little skill that not everyone knows. But I do love the store bots as well. The one that is my actual favorite at the moment. And it's been my favorite for over a year now. <laughs> okay. So for my next thing I'm gonna be working on, I'm gonna be working on the salad. And the salad. Oh, thank you, Mark. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for the gifts. And thank you for the follows. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to be making a charred romaine salad here. Natasha, thank you so much. I will be making a charred romaine salad and I will also be using charred lemons as my dressing for this. So we are going to, I'm going to chop this in half because we're going to do the wedge. So whenever I'm chopping this in half, I go through the root. And then everything else becomes easier. And we want to slice it this way so everything stays intact and so i'm going to rinse this under cold water but like also i need this dry so i got to rinse under cold water and then i have to pat it really dry this could have been a prep ahead kind of situation where you wash them and then let them dry here i'm actually gonna i have too much stuff on this i'm gonna have a less attractive cutting board now. It's the price I pay. Am I a country girl? No, I am not. I am born and raised in Tennessee, but I am not a country girl. I kind of make it clear to people that um, it's Nashville that I'm from. <laughs> Because, like, I feel like Nashville's different than the rest of Tennessee. My husband is from small town Tennessee, also Georgia. But even though my husband's from, like, small town Tennessee, he's not. Um, I wouldn't describe him as a country guy either. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm kind of a little obsessed with, like, food science and the science of cooking and stuff. Just to, you know, I got to... I'm the type of person that, where I got to know all the rules of how to do things before I will actually do them. So a lot of my knowledge is in just like weird food science-y stuff. Oh yeah. All right. I think that's pretty well dry. Of course, like when I brush the oil on here, oil doesn't combine with water. So we want to try and get it as dry as we can. This recipe even though when it comes to olive oil um, and the grill they say like hey don't use olive oil if you're using high temps because it does burn and I do agree with that however I'm doing it for flavor one and then second of all this isn't gonna be on the grill long enough for that oil to burn so that is why even though you've probably heard to never use olive oil for high temps that's why I'm doing it anyway about like a tablespoon per each one. I think one romaine wedge is definitely going to be the one I use in the pictures for the website. So this recipe is already up on Food Talk TV for the um, charred romaine salad. And then alongside this, we're going to be charring some lemons for the vinaigrette that goes with it. But like with something so strong as a charred romaine, you don't really need a super flashy dressing, you know, because like this is the star. We're keeping the romaine the star with its. And you know, this is actually a really great salad if you're trying to make someone who doesn't like salad eat salad. Oh, thank you, Melissa Murd. How are you doing? Y'all, Melissa Murd is another creator on Food Talk TV. They go live on Mondays at 6 cents. 6 p.m. Central with their show, The Spice is Right. 
So be sure you're giving them a follow so you can catch them. They're so much fun to watch. Ah, excited about that. Cool, cool. I think I was wanting to just char. I don't know if I should char two or three lemons, but eh. Oh, hello, got some from Louisville. I love Louisville. Melissa Murd, thank you, thank you. Y'all be sure you're following Food Talk TV because we go live every single day with live cooking content. And my name is Taylor Rose. I'm here Thursdays at seven central. Each day we have a different one. Oftentimes we have multiple creators a day. We're trying to get it to where we have multiple creators a day every day. Because we've been going live every single day for over three years now. So, it's nice to have the two shows. Y'all, thank you so much for the follows. Thank you, thank you. And if you are not cooking, I mean, even if you are cooking, if you have a free hand, if you could please tap the screens, that really helps out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So, one thing I didn't do on here. So, my husband, he... He cleaned and grated or and oiled the grill before he turned that on earlier, but of course we had the potatoes in between that. And so I am going to add oil to the fish just to make sure. But then we're also gonna add salt and pepper to it. Or you know what, I'm just gonna do salt. I don't wanna do pepper on the outside because pepper does burn a bit more quickly, even though I'm using olive oil. I get the comment a lot of times that I use too much salt. And so I just respond back, well, you don't use enough. But yeah, everyone has different salt limits. Everyone has different preferences. Literally why I will never include the amount of salt in a recipe unless it like scientifically has something to do with that. Oh man, this is so stuffed. Just like your mom. Sorry. <laughs> that was a force of habit from high school. Oh, yeah. I think it will be. Maybe I'll just remove a lemon. Oh, yeah. I think the onions might be the most difficult. But this stuffing isn't meant to be eaten, so any so if this does fall into the grate, it's fine. It's it'll be just great. Wash my hands. Look at me, look at look at me, espresso. I'm not even close to too much salt. Thank you, no content, Jimmy. I appreciate you. Okay, yeah, my poor husband has been working on these potatoes for too long. I thought they would, this would be a lot easier, but I gave him essentially sliced potatoes to cook on the grill before everything else, and yeah. How's it going over here, husband? If you have somebody in your life that you just, you know, that you, a loved one in your life that really loves to grill, is really good at grilling, this recipe is a great way to knock them down a peg or two and just completely take the wind out of their sails. All right, cool. <laughs> that, that's what this would be good for. Okay, so yeah. Now, I got inspired by that recipe because um, it was literally under a recipe called um, Best Potatoes Ever. Mm. I'm gonna call them yard potatoes because <laughs> so many of the burnt ones ended up getting flung into the yard. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I think next we should do the salad and the lemons so that way I can get started on the salad because the um, fish is already... Oh, oh, wow, I think he really is upset about these potatoes. Are you ready for uh, romaine? Or are you letting um, the grill heat back up? It's super freaking hot. Uh... I'm, I'm gonna let it stabilize because it's very hot because of the, the the long amount of time it was open. So I, I let, let's see where it ends up being. It's probably gonna be around the five to six hundred range. Okay. All right. 
And y'all, we try and keep our shows to about an hour, but I, oh, I feel like I've pretty much given up on that idea. From Food Talk TV, we do have people going live every single day. And a lot of them are really good at hitting the hour mark, but a lot of them are not. But yeah, I feel like these may be a bit too thick, thin. That may be one of the problems, but. We're good. Oh yeah, no, I, I like these. Like they're not as crispy as I thought they would be. He probably gave up on them super quick, but I'm a fan. Like soft potato chips. Alrighty. I'll get started on my dressing for my romaine salad then while I'm waiting on him to cool down and let the grill cool down a little. Drop some ketchup, licked her tato, no sir. <laughs> Y'all, it's so funny because my username is ketchup is garbage, so the people that come in to tell me about ketchup. <laughs> Oh man, I just saw they came out with a pickle ketchup. And um, that's basically my least favorite thing on the planet. <laughs> I'm also just a really not a fan of pickles because of the dill. Or like the dill seed really tastes gross to me. So when I saw, have been seeing that lately, it's like, oh, of course, of course. Alrighty, get some garlic. A lot of times with my garlic, I try to process my garlic and then just have a bunch of it ready and frozen just so I can throw garlic in at a moment's notice, but I've used my garlic. I use a lot of garlic. Put a little bit of salt. Sorry you don't like my cooking, that's okay. I don't know why you're here, but okay. So what are we gonna do? We're, uh, we're going to char the... Oh yes, I would char the, um, I would char the lettuce first and the, and the lemons. The lettuce first or the lemons first? I'm, I'm just thinking about it on my end about how I'd like to finish up the salad first because the fish is already like fish. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's already fish. fish. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna just char the face of this, like the open side face. Hmm. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, the cut side down for both the lemons and the romaine. The cut side down. Yeah. Awesome. Lick Tortata says he's here for the same reason you're here, but um, I don't know if that guy had a crush on me, Lick Tortata. Oh yeah, we did some like grilled potatoes and we're doing rainbow trout. We have some rainbow trout, whole rainbow trout that's on, that's about to get on the grill. But we're also doing a charred lemon and a charred romaine salad. And y'all, most of my recipes do include some form of mustard on there. And a lot of times I'll put Dijon on there, but what I really mean is um, whatever's your favorite. Because when I put mustard in a recipe, they're pretty much all interchangeable. Did I go to chef school? No, I did not go to chef school, but I do read a lot and I'm really into the hows and whys of things. So I read a lot of like food science stuff. Um, my actual profession, I'm a professional bartender. So that's where my background is. And so I've worked in restaurants and around a lot of restaurants and stuff. 
how, and I've even written drinks for restaurant menus. I've done that. However, I don't like, or I never wanted to do back of house as far as professionally cooking goes because every single person I've ever met that has been back of house as far as cooking goes, someone that does it professionally, they don't do it at home and they don't like it anymore. And so we don't have to monetize all our hobbies. Uh, okay, what am I doing right now? But no, no, what I mean is um, I like cooking for the fun of it and doing it professionally might make it just not fun anymore. Alrighty. Mixology. What's up, Cass? At least someone is in the house that likes my cooking. dressing for this this is like a whipped honey that I had made so it's it's honey it's just like the top part of it is whipped if you wait for your honey to crystallize and then you put it in with a mixer in a um, stand mixer with a paddle attachment and just I can't remember if it's paddle or whisk I can't remember what I did with that you know what I'm thinking it might be whisk but then you just let it fluff up. It takes about like 15 minutes on the mixer, but then the entire thing becomes this like fluffy whipped honey and it's so good. But I needed honey a while back, so I got my fluffed honey and then microwaved it for a little bit. And so now that's my, uh, it, it's honey, it works. Oh, honey. So got my garlic and my honey. All right, and then of course mustard, and then y'all, I'm having a hard time using anything but Cuban style for this meal. I'm just, I just don't see it happening. This is just like the perfect mustard for this, and I probably say that a lot, but I really like this as a cooking mustard. Let's see if the, I will be whisking that with some oil, but I'm also gonna be needing some acid, and my husband is, grilling the onions, or I'm sorry, not the onions. He's grilling the lemons. So let's check it out. I think that's charred in it. Oh, I think so. Cause yeah, we just want it crispy on the edges. We're not like trying to cook it. We're just, yeah. Yeah, it seemed like it was you know, at the point. Of okay, well, I will return a plate to you. Uh, yeah, I'd, I will, I'd like a bowl for these. So a bowl for the any, lemons? Yeah, if any juices come out, they'll be in the Okay, heard. Alrighty. Okay, so right now I just pulled these romaine wedges off the grill. I'm he's also charring some lemons for me so I can make a charred lemon vinaigrette for this salad. And then we also have some rainbow trout that needs to go on the grill. This is rainbow trout, and then I inside I salt and peppered it. I also added a bunch of herbs and lemon and onion, put some oil over the top and salted that. And then um this is my, my husband wants to leave me potatoes. We're just joking on that. But um, I basically had him grill thin slices of potatoes because I saw a recipe that said best potato recipe ever. It is not, it is not, but it's very tasty. It's like a soft potato chip. So I'm not upset by it, but he was upset during the entire process. So I don't think I can ever gr get him to grill a potato for me again. Hmm. Oh yeah, I need to get him a bowl. That's such a weird request for a bowl for those, right? Let's give him back the bowl and see if we have some charred lemons. Y'all, if you have your grill or smoker going and you're using something with fresh lemon juice, um, char your lemons because the flavor is amazing. I will do this with cocktails, I do it with dressings, even as like a grilled fish side item, or like just with grilled fish just to serve on the side. And the juice. Like, the juice. They make like so much more juice because they're already- Oh yes, that's right, because typically for fresh lemons, I'll throw them in the microwave a few seconds to, how long have these been on? Not long enough. Not long enough. 
<laughs> yeah, we want them nice. Right, let's see. Let's check. Let's check <laughs> yes, because they do all oh, say. Oh, that, that oh, oh. Pretty good. Oh, yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, that I'll lemon. harvest that one. Okay. Oh, juicy. That one. So try not to uh, F with them too much because, you know, we don't want to get all the juice out of it before we want all the juice out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are looking good. I would say about like what five minutes, maybe -ish? Yeah, like five to ten, like eight minutes or something. You know, depending on how hot your grill is, this thing is like screaming. Oh yeah, it's it's probably like like fuck. I don't know. Well, while I'm standing here, I'm tapping the screen. Ah. So if y'all are waiting for lemons, uh, please tap oh. the screen. That sure does help. Tap 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 tap. You can do it multiple times. Yeah. You don't have to just like hit the one light. Probably about 600 degrees or so. Oh, the grill is? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, yeah, it's pretty screaming. So, like, yeah, like five to eight minutes in that scenario. If you're a little lower on temp, maybe a little longer. Mm-hmm. Guadua, hello there. Thank you for the heart puffs and roses. Thank you. Can I say screaming at like 600? Like, you're like it. I feel like that. If you're like, what, like 800, you're like Looney Tunes screaming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh. And so now all we really got to do is wait until these become like kind or, of. Or you're like that scream from Top Gun that like. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, you were, like, yeah. Okay, yeah, no. So, I need to, like, just wait for those to be cool enough for me to mess with. And then we are going to, like, let the grill heat back up so we can put these trouts on there. Oh, y'all like the birthday thing here? It was my niece's birthday, and she was over here for her little party. And, y'all, if you are not familiar with Guadua Cooks here, she is a Monday at 9.30 a.m. show with your Food Talk TV. She's been here the entirety of the three or four years with Food Talk. And her food is always just so beautifully plated. I am a huge fan of hers. Like, her food makes me feel inspired to dress mine up a bit more. All right. Yes, she always has beautiful looking food. Delicious food. A lot of us here on Food Top are really uh, home cooks, but she's one of the few I'll call a chef. Though, I mean, like, what is the difference other than professional? Oh, look at this juice from the charred lemon. This is also so good. This is so good in drinks, guys. Mmm. And it just makes the lemon so much juicier. Whew. Oh, yeah. You know, I think I'm going to change my recipe since this recipe is already up. But I think I'm changing my recipe because I got a lot more juice out of those two lemons. Than I thought I would have, so I don't want to... Add too many lemons to this. But we can always taste and adjust, and if it needs more lemon, I'll just add more lemon. Taylor, you have to confess something? Oh no. You have to confess something? Is it that you don't like mustard or that you're eating something with ketchup right now? That's usually what people's confessions are to me. It's okay. I know that all of our buds are different. And a lot of people who are really like just not into mustard, a lot of those people tend to have, um, so mustard is a naturally bitter flavor. That is its yeah, flavor profile is going to be that bitterness. So if you have really strong taste receptors, then bitterness is not in your, you know, repertoire of things to enjoy. So 
because it is a bitter food. So I understand. But it's also to me an acquired taste. Like I remember hating yellow mustard growing up, but then being introduced to honey mustard and loving that. And then that's where I get into the other mustards. I call it the gateway mustard. All right, beautiful vinaigrette here. Oh, are you going to be grilling the fish now? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Are you able to take the camera with you? Um. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. So let's, uh... uh where's your uh, camera harness? Huh? Where's your camera harness? Uh, okay, I'll just take it with me then. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, this is, uh, Ryan's first time being bum, alone bum, and alive. Bum, 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 bum. Alone and alive. Dun, 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 On a dun, live. Dun, 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 dun. up a little bit. Probably a good idea. Some grapeseed oil. for Taylor because I don't have enough hands. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't have enough hands or time. <laughs> oh no, my poor husband. No, he's usually not the one to hold the phone with that, but I had to run off for a second and so that's why he took care of that for me. But you know what? I think he does deserve to be more of a cameraman nowadays. But so the plan is this is on medium high heat here. Um, 450 degrees, the way to go. You want to grill your grate before you even turn it on. Grill it. Or not grill it, I'm sorry, clean it and oil it. And we did, but we've also cooked other things. Anyway. There's also oil on the outside of the fish as well when I stuffed it. We, I did cover that with oil. We cooked the potatoes as well and... And the romaine and the lemons. Oiled it once because uh, that was like the only thing I Oh, they're not Brancino, they are rainbow trout. Rainbow trout is something that Tennessee does have a lot of. You can tell that it's a rainbow trout because of that pink line down the middle there. Um, another common form of trout is going to be the steelhead. We also have brown trout here. Now, this is a trout that stays only in fresh water. So its entire life it is in fresh water. Oh boy. <laughs> Robert Neal says, Taylor, Taylor's husband, good evening. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> I like that. Mr. and Mrs. Taylor. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Mustard Queen. Okay, and so now that we have the fish on here, we're gonna cover it and it's gonna be six minutes. So I'm, I really need an Alexa. Alexa, timer for... Okay. I don't know why I did that like I'm not a professional server that can like layer. Brown trout capital here in Arkansas. I don't think I've even had brown trout before, but you know, I've never even cooked a whole fish before. And typically I'm the type of person where I don't like cooking something for the first time on a live, but one, my audience members are smart. So I like hearing about that too. I've watched a few YouTube videos, so I'm basically an expert now. And then three, um, you know, there's gotta be a first time for everything, you know? Because that was actually fish I got at the farmer's market that was vacuum sealed and frozen immediately. And so it's been in my freezer for a bit. Ah, there we go. That's much better. But I haven't wanted to cook it because I'm like, ah, I've never done that before. I don't know how. There's a first time for everything, y'all. There's always a first time for it. So let's get some of this uh, charred romaine. 
back over here. Oh yes. So it'll still be a bit crisp because we didn't like cook and char the entire thing. It was only about like three minutes it was on. So it's still pretty crisp, but it's a little warm and you get that like nice charred flavor. Taylor also knows how to cook. Yes, Mr. Mustard. I haven't been calling him Mr. Mustard because there is a mustard brand by that name, but I think he can be Mr. Mustard. I think that's fine. Oh, I didn't taste this dressing to make sure I needed to adjust. Mm. Sometimes when you add a good mustard, especially one that's like a little bit of a saltier mustard, you don't really need to add so much salt. So when I'm adding salt to, or when I'm adding mustard to something, I taste before I add the salt because that was already some of the salt. And of course, pepper, 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 pepper. I'm gonna do just a little bit more juice just to make sure I'm getting some of the char on here. Because yes, char is a flavor component here. So put some of the charred lemon over the top here to make sure we got those flavors, picking out the seeds. I should have done it over my hands. I thought that, yeah, there we go. Oh yes. This is a perfect grilling salad. Oh man, my family absolutely loved it. My little nieces, they're one and two. So y'all, I did a Father's Day brunch on Sunday on Food Talk TV and my family came over for that. And those little girls, one and two, were so obsessed with my grits and with the um, steak. Like, I was just so proud of how good of eaters they were. Yes. Alexa, what is six minutes? Oh, shoot, I did not. Did someone set a timer for me? Because I did not. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely one of those things where you did want to do a timer, but as soon as I walked inside, completely forgot the timer, so. I feel like it's maybe been six minutes. I don't know. Let's see. Robert, how long have you been in here? Because I feel like when you said good evening, yeah, what time did you get in here? Because I think that will tell me how long this fish has been on. Oh yeah, I really need the Alexa to set timers for. Robert is the new Alexa. Robert is the new Alexa. I'm <laughs> busy drowning in your food. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, flip it. All right. So, hold on. Gotta flip the camera now, too. So, it's gonna be like two tongs. Fish. 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 Do this one. Actually, this one is the... Uh, Probably the easier the one, but this is not... One. Okay. And I would say since that side got crisp. Oh yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. That's a pretty fish. That's a fish. So I think at this point it, we just need uh, four minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're flipping it to the way hotter part of oh, this grill. Oh, way grill. hotter part of this grill. So, so it's gonna be about 12 minutes on the grill total. Yeah, don't set the timer to me. Yeah, don't set the timer to me. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna set the timer for three minutes. Got it. Ah, I'm so excited. So excited for that. Y'all, so if you're ever afraid to cook something just because you've never done it before, just remember there's a first time for everything. And you know what? The first time might not even be terrible. It might even be great. You just don't know until you do it. Looking for my microplane. I 
need to figure out what plate I will be. This may be the presentation plate. I really need more presentation plates like Arx has because her plating, like I swear every time I watch her show, there's a different um, plate she has. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this the presentation and just clean it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh my gosh, that char is amazing. The char on that romaine is everything. Y'all, if you think you're not a salad person, try this. It's so good. I already squeezed some of the charred lemons on top of that. I'm gonna do a little bit of fresh parm. Of course, blue cheese, feta, whatever cheese you like. Then of course our vinaigrette that we just made. I did some of the charred lemon juice, olive oil. There's some of the Cuban style mustard, but whatever mustard is your favorite is what you do. There's also some honey, garlic, salt and pepper. But any dressing works for a grilled romaine. Do we have a platter? Um, that's the platter I have for the fish. Uh, uh, yes, platter. I'm not using all of the dressing on that. And, whew, you can see where I... You can add other stuff to it too, like have some tomatoes on the side or... Oh yeah, the timer just went. Is your phone okay? Okay. All right, perfect. This. Oh, thank you, Robert. <laughs> check out our YouTube you should check out her little vacation that she had that's uploaded on there or not little vacation it's a big vacation she went to she did a Hawaiian cruise and went up to all over the islands and so she went on live for food talk to show us the foods that they were offering on the cruise and it was insane absolutely insane and I am so appreciative that she gave us some of her vacation Is that it? Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. You got anything else? Nope, everything is done. Right. I mean, except for um, I'm going to make a beer monte. It's not going on the grill. No, no, not going on the grill. Though it could, but it's not going on the grill. So, now with this, ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautifulness. We are going to need a beer monte sauce and what a beer monte sauce is it's essentially like melted butter if it was made to be a creamy sauce it is essentially an emulsion of cold butter into water because when you melt butter it butter in itself is an emulsion so when you melt it all the things separate the butter fat the water the milk solids they all separate but whenever you heat up some water to a certain temperature, it's gotta be 180 to 190, and it's gonna be just a couple of tablespoons, and then we're gonna be adding a stick of butter, cold butter, cold, cold, cold butter, a little bit at a time. So as we stir it, it will be, so as we stir it, then it will become an emulsification. So it's basically like butter, but sauce. And I figure I can throw some other stuff in there as well. So I do have some garlic. Yes, I prepped some garlic for this. So I'm letting my pan heat up a bit before I even start this. They're monte. I'm trying to think of like what herbs I want in here as well. Ooh, I didn't put any of my oregano inside the fish. 
I was gonna put oregano on the fish, but I did not. So it's basically gonna be butter sauce is what we're doing. So we're just going to add to this sauce to make it what we want. So I'll just be adding some herbs and some garlic. So for my herbs, I have some chives, I have some oregano, and I have some thyme. Cause I've got time. Yeah. I'm not in Nashville because I'm a singer, okay guys? <laughs> That is, um, you, 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 no, bees can't have onions. Bees can't have onions. We call them the bumblebee. Like, we are very aware that that is a cat. Bumblebee. But, bees can't have bees onions. Not. He's not. He thinks he's a bee. He thinks he's a bee. I thought about just throwing this in a food processor, but sometimes I like to, you know, just Bumblebee. practice my knife cuts. Bumblebee. Whenever I have the time for it, I'll practice my knife cuts. But let's be real, there's a reason why kitchen gadgets exist, and it's because it's awesome. Bumblebee. Kaz, thank you so much for the ice creams. Ice cream. Oh man, last time I did my live, uh, last time I did my live, I was cooking, and while I was cooking, the ice cream truck went by, and so that was really, and it was sitting parked right outside my house, right outside my window here, so the only sound I could hear was a, <laughs> so I think it's funny I'm getting a ice cream. Alrighty, so, butter is in fact an emulsion. But when we add it to the water like this, there is water content in salt that exists. So when we are heating water not too much, we're, I'm going to heat the water, let it simmer, and then turn off the heat immediately because this needs to be 180 to 190. But as we add the cold water to it, the water, the milk fat and the butter solids just kind of become evenly distributed. And so that's what makes this an emulsification. That's what makes it a sauce. And that's what makes it like a creamy thing and not like a greasy thing that melted butter typically is. And now, I will also say, you should use unsalted butter. You should, but we have an insane amount of salted water, or salted butter here, so I'll be using salted butter. Now, people don't like to use salted butter for this. I'm gonna add just my couple tablespoons of water in here. Ah, oh, let that come to a simmer a little bit. But anyway, salted butter is not the way to go for this because the salted butter, just because the salt is there, that means there's more of a water content in the butter. In fact, the best kind of butter you're going to use for this is going to be a European butter, not an American butter. Oh, yeah. And not an American butter because European butters just tend to have less water. I wish we had it on our labels how much of water content each butter had. But of course store brands are gonna be more water, fancier ones are gonna be less. That's why more expensive butter tastes better. Oh, I got my goal achieved. Thank you so much. Woo woo, thank you, Kaz. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get some corn even though i'm not cooking anything with corn all right i know oh yeah baby corn not relevant at all to what i'm doing baby corn. so so we have this as a simmer now we see that it's simmering what temperature does water simmer to about two Hmm? Oh, I was just thinking of our baby corns and we could do a baby lote. Baby lote. Oh, that's a cute idea. We should do a baby lote. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, he had to tell me that idea before he forgot it. I understand. So now that this went to a simmer, I'm going to turn off the heat and we're going to start adding our butter. This is an entire stick of salted butter. Now, I've seen many people say that the correct 
the correct ratio is three tablespoons of water for eight ounces or eight tablespoons of butter. However, um, I'm using salted butter. So at this point, I'm just gonna be adding butter until it looks right. I do recommend making this with unsalted butter instead, but I have salted butter because um, that's what my husband got. And when I was making my niece a cake, I was making my niece a cake and then I realized he got salted butter for the buttercream and I was just so upset he had to go buy like new, um, had to buy icing specifically for the cake store bought even though I wanted it homemade. But um, then I talked to Michelle who is a baker here on Food Talk TV. She does, and my heat's turned off by the way now. Um, she does her show 7 a.m.s on Wednesdays, but like I was telling her about this and she was like, oh, I use salted butter for everything, even my buttercream. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, Red Wagon Bakery is in. Oh, I didn't even see that you were in here when I was telling that. <laughs> but yeah, now I have a lot of salted butter. And salted butter is not the thing I like, you know, doing. Okay, I'm going to turn on the heat just a little lower because we want this at about 180 to 190. Oh yeah. You use salted butter for everything too. There's definitely two camps of this. There are some people who always use salted and some who only use unsalted and I'm usually in the unsalted category. So it's kind of like learning how to cook with a new burner, you know, like you just don't know, but yes. Just gonna slowly whisk it in. This will take about a minute or so. So with salted butter, it's, um, of course it's gonna be salted, but because the salt is present there, that salt also has a higher, or I'm sorry, the salted butter will have a higher water content. So it's important when you're baking in stuff to know if you're using salted and unsalted, and it's not always interchangeable. It'll take a minute to come together, but it's basically just going to be, I mean, you guys are already seeing this, right? Like you're already seeing that it's a butter, but creamy. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Bethel? How are you doing? <laughs> so yeah, what a uh, beer monte sauce. This is a French sauce and this is it kind of a basic sauce, people will add stuff to it, but if you're at a restaurant and you experience a butter sauce, this is traditionally what that is. Basically emulsifying the water into the butter. So basically it's stick form, but melted. And now this is a sauce that, the reason why this is the last thing I'm making is because this is one of the last things you wanna make when you're making it because it only holds as a structured sauce from um, 180 degrees to 190. So once it starts chilling after that, it separates, it's just not really the sauce anymore. However, however, and I'll show y'all, cause I did make this earlier cause I'm like, cause I hadn't made it with salted butter. I wanted to make sure I could. I went ahead and refrigerated my remaining from earlier and so you see those solids in the bottom it's still very separated but i can still melt this and use it like melted butter or like any of my recipes where i'm using butter i can just use that but it's not going to be this so we try to use it while it's hot but you can still save it it's just not going to be this galaga i don't Oh, beer blanc. So this is not um, beer blanc. Beer blanc is going to be a sauce that's made with wine. So the beer is the, um, wow, wow, wow. Um, beer is um, butter in French. So that's basically like white butter sauce. But um, beer monte, monte literally translates to mounted. So I don't know why this sauce is mounted, but Let's be real, if you're not part of a culture and you hear some of the slang, it doesn't make sense. 
Like cutting the mustard. How do you even cut mustard? Oh yeah, that's the name of my show, guys. Welcome to Food Talk TV. If you're just scrolling through here, be sure you're giving us a follow because we do live cooking content every single day. And my show is called Cutting the Mustard because I'm Taylor Rose. I am the mustard queen. Seriously, just search for mustard queen on this app. You'll find me. But if you need a more direct way, my name is Ketchup is Garbage. Oh yeah, this is looking pretty saucy. Now turn up the heat just a little bit. It's still on like low. I do not want this simmering. I do not want this boiling because if this comes up to a boil, then I just broke the emotion emulsion again. And the water definitely needs to be cold. I know a lot of times with cooking, or I'm sorry, not the water, the butter needs to be cold. I know a lot of times with cooking, we just expect butter needing to be room temperature, but no sirree, not for this, it has to be cold. Yeah, and so there we have it. This is essentially just butter and water. Now look how freaking creamy that is. And if, do you count water as an ingredient? I don't know if you count water as an ingredient because if you don't count water as an ingredient, this is a one ingredient sauce. Water is a pantry item, I think. Yeah, but is it an ingredient? Like when you're saying, oh, make this two ingredient blank. Well, I mean. And then also a salted ingredient, which I'm not salting this because there's already salt in here. But if you're making it with unsalted butter, you want to salt it. Oh, look at that. I need to bring my camera down better. I am oh, so nervous because I really wanted to make this sauce, but um, I just have a bunch of uh, salted butter. And now I'm really on a deep dive of, you know, things I can use salted butter for and the difference. Because now I have like $12 worth of salted butter in my fridge. <laughs> Oh yeah, adding time. Water rhymes with butter. Oh my gosh, y'all. So this is this thing that I'm laughing at so much right now. So I'm sure you have heard the new song with um, Sabrina Carpenter, the please, please, please. And um, it's so funny because she changed, when she gets to the part of the song where she's cursing, where she says little sucker is what the, you know, clean part says. Um, she just kind of almost turns like really country with the mother sucker, you know, like at the end. And people will talk about like how it's just so randomly country. But then I saw a video talking about how that's a Pennsylvania girl. And like, she says the mother sucker like you would, um, like why, how a Pennsylvania person would ask for water, water. And so we've just been laughing at that. <laughs> Cause I love that song, but that was like my favorite explanation of that. <laughs> so just some chives and some thyme, a little bit of garlic, not adding salt since the salt is already there. I feel like it needs more of something. Ooh. I know it needs some oregano. No, do, 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 do. Y'all, we are almost done. This is the last thing. I like how I already did that earlier, y'all. It's okay. We have more herbs. More chives. And thyme. There's some garlic in here. And you know, it's not a mother sauce. This is not a mother sauce, which I'm sure you heard me talking about a French sauce and you may assume that this is a mother sauce. And I was kind of trying to figure out why it wasn't considered a, a mother sauce, but it's not a mother sauce because mother sauces are typically um, like emulsions or thickeners with an added ingredient, but this is like just an emulsion, right? Like it's essentially just butter, but different. So this is why it's not classified as a mother sauce, but in my heart, it's a mother sauce. It's a mother butter. It's a mother butter sauce. Alrighty. And I think that will do it for us. Ooh. 
let's uh so yes we do want to serve this pretty immediately or at least kept on warm while you're waiting for everything oh look at that i'm gonna need a picture of that ramekin but I've even seen recipes online where they start with this, but then they'll add, or start with the basic butter sauce, but then we'll add like gochujang or um, hot sauce or, you know, mustard. It's totally a thing, but y'all, this, I love emulsion sauces. Love them, love them, love them. It's like my favorite thing to do on Food Talk, our discussing emulsions. <laughs> it's like my favorite. Ah, so. We're going to move. Of course, we are going to get pictures. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Now, let's bring you over here to show y'all what I, we made today. And you know what? Thank you for pointing out the pictures because I need to get a picture of the vinaigrette just because the charred lemon vinaigrette. So, so good. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's flip this baby over. Adding time is all of our goals, yes. I make so many time puns, it's ridiculous. So, here is the charred romaine and lemon salad we did char. Ooh, I have to grab some of these. <sighs> I don't think that looks right. There we go. That will be for the picture. Oh yeah. With the vinaigrette that I did, pretty simple vinaigrette with the charred lemon, olive oil, there's garlic. I did use mustard in there, of course, for usual salt and pepper. What do you think about the... Is that it? Oh, I did put a little honey in there as well. Is that it? Yeah, it's so good. And then, of course, the um, Biermonte sauce that we did here. And we added some herbs and garlic. Oh my gosh. It's like butter, but it's creamy. It's basically butter, but uh, a better texture. Uh, so good. And then of course, last but not least, this beautiful trout. I have the recipe up for this and the salad up on Food Talk TV. It's already up and it's stuffed with all these aromatics and stuff, but we will not, those aromatics aren't really meant to be eaten. That's just to flavor the fish with. Yeah, right it's there. Like, it's like potpourri. It looks yeah, yeah. tasty, but don't eat it. Well, I mean, you can eat it. Like, it's all technically edible, but I don't know how, like, good it would be, and that's not, like, the but, intention um, of um, it. But well, Yeah, I'm talking about potpourri, though. Probably shouldn't eat your potpourri. Yeah, don't eat potpourri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it looks like you can make a tea like, out of it. I feel like you could make edible potpourri. Or, like, drinkable potpourri tea. Potpourri tea. Oh. Oh. All righty, y'all. That was it. Oh yeah. And then also if you ever want your husband who loves to grill, if you ever want him to like consider not loving you anymore, ask him to make these potatoes on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them turned out okay. Some of them turned out okay. I think they're delicious. It's like a soft grilled potato chip. Probably like but, even, um, even some of the crispies, I don't know. Maybe the crispy says good. Not bad. Yeah. I just toss those with oil and mustard and salt, pepper, and garlic, but um, yeah, um, I don't recommend that one. <laughs> we did that already. I think that was it. That is all I can do here today, right? Is there anything else? No? Alrighty. Thank y'all so much for joining. Be sure you're following us so you see us anytime we're live. The recipes are already up. Some of the recipes are. And then... If you want to re-watch this live, it will be on later this week on the YT page. So thank you all so much for joining me. I will see you all next time. Happy mustarding.